Okay, this is how you remove the spindle shaft from the lathe at 1i611p. This model. And the year is 1967. So... This is what the headstock should look like when you can start pulling the spindle out. So uh, you remove uh, the screw from the shaft right here and then you take off uh, this gear which is threaded on the spindle. The threads are right here at the moment and some models I think have a simple snap ring right here instead of a gear so you have to take that one off so either you have this gear with with threads on it internal threads or then you have <coughs> a snap ring you have to take it off and also you have to take off the uh, the gear shift linkages I'm not completely sure if you have to remove the uh, the rear shifter but I did it anyways and the way how I got them off uh, they have this kind of shafts and they have also these plugs that go into these holes and they have bearings for the for the long shafts and these are on pretty tight so what I did I first tried to make a slide hammer like this it just has an 8mm bolt on it and also a smaller bolt I used to pull something else out uh, but I only got one out with that one but then I made another simple tool which is bolt, two washers and a piece of pipe goes like this and the threads are sticking out a little bit and then and of course uh, I forgot to say you have to drill and tap these plugs I used a six and a half millimeter drill and then I threaded eight millimeter threads MA threads in the plugs and then I can put this on there and then start screwing screwing the bolt and uh, the plug will start going coming out and it and this pipe is just big enough to fit over the plug and then um, you do not have to take these bolts out yet so leave this one on uh, it will hold the rear, bear rear bearing in place and also do not remove this snap ring right here this does not have to be re removed and must not be removed and also this cover must not be removed yet but you can leave this shaft in place and now I hope you can see the situation I can try to show you it everywhere and uh, these two gears are still still in mesh but that's okay Uh, and then the setup for pulling out, I have two pieces of wood and a threaded M16 bar and a piece of iron between the woods. And now I'm using a wrench to pull the spindle out. It's pretty tight because what's resisting now is this gear. This gear is jamming against this gear and the spindle is going through this gear and this has it's got a pretty tight uh, press fit but the whole spindle has to go through it and also the rear bearing is resisting a little bit but not nearly as much as this one uh, if you have a um, uh, oxyacetylene torch you can try to heat this one but it seems like it's not necessary Okay, I will now pull the spindle through and maybe I will get back to you soon. Okay, the spindle is now out. Um, it came out with little problems. Um, the only thing I had to do 
was to tap this big front gear a little bit because it was getting stuck against uh, against the casting and it, it somehow stuck a little bit to the spindle but other than that it came out real nice and now I have some three gears which fell out this is the gear that gave me the most trouble and something else too here you can see one end of the uh, of the axle bearing maybe you can see the number maybe not I wonder if the heating marks are because I tried to heat this gear or is it because the um, the bearing was generating heat so much but in any case this bearing is destroyed um, you can see pieces of the and uh, let me show you the, the bearing that it should look like just a minute okay here you can see all the bearings in the spindle uh, this is the back bearing which takes the force in in if the chuck is here and the tail stock is here um, when I try to turn uh, when I try to pull the spindle outward that's what takes the force in this is this takes that that force and then I have this thrust bearing I guess by the way this is called an angular contact ball bearing and this is a complete thrust bearing uh, it has two races and balls in between and uh, sheet metal thing to keep the balls in and then I have the radial bearing the front bearing and I can show you the numbers the front bearing is uh, where is it here This is the front bearing and the thrust bearing is here and actually the rear bearing has no numbers stamped on it but I can show you the old bearing when I get it off and when you compare this thrust bearing or axial bearing to this maybe you can see how beaten up the groove is and there is nothing left of the steel sheet piece that holds the balls in place. When you look down there, you can see the balls, uh, which um, came out by me. I, um, <coughs> uh, I pulled these races off so much that the balls just fell through. But you can see these pieces everywhere in the oil pan. These are parts of the uh, of this steel piece, which holds the balls. You can see some more in there. All of those are from that. I wonder what happened. And then you can see the the main bearing race in here, and it has some. Actually, it feels pretty good to the touch. But it had a lot of play anyways. So, now this lathe is gonna get some new bearings. Okay, I will get back to you soon. Thanks. Okay, here is the Hirton number for the back bearing. It's 46209E. And I found a little problem. Uh, the thrust bearing actually was spinning in the wrong place. You can see what the other race look like looks like. This piece should be still standing still and not turning, but it has turned against its seat right here. 
and it has made some pretty nasty scoring. And this is not exactly very good. I think I'm gonna have to figure out what was the original measurement and maybe by welding I can fill this and then surface grind it back. But I cannot put it back like this. I wonder what happened, what caused the bedding to, to uh, slide from the wrong place. I guess it's called spinning. Okay, I guess this is the end of the spindle removal video. And the next part will be, hopefully, maybe about this piece or putting the spindle back together. Okay, thank you.